If you feel like you're drowning in a sea of information and spell effects while doing content in Final Fantasy XIV, I think I can help you. Let's cover 10 things that will help you clean up your screen and make you a better player. These things will range from design theories to boxes you should tick somewhere in your settings, and while this guide is aimed mainly at newer raiders, some of the more obscure stuff might interest vets too. I do want to quickly acknowledge that there is a great element of subjectivity to all UI customization. What works for player A might seem absolutely atrocious to player B. However, I also firmly believe that there are some best practices and general guidelines that can only help you. As for controller players, I'm sorry, but I don't want to play an MMO with a racing wheel. The first two tips will not be very relevant to you, but the later ones will be. Speaking of which, let's start with the building blocks of all success. Good, efficient controls. WASD is probably where your offhand sits almost 24-7. Why then do I see beginners keybind important abilities to ridiculous things like 9? It's me, I was once beginners. Unless you have anime anatomy, mock practicing the piano as you try to do your rotation is not advised. Instead, try binding everything in the neighborhood of WASD. I usually don't keybind things past this dividing line unless it's stuff I won't need in combat, like teleport. As a rule, if you have to lift your hand off WASD to hit it, it's probably a bad keybind. But I have more spells than keys in that area, introducing modifiers. Shift, Control, and Alt can all be paired with other keybinds. This allows you to keep literally everything within reach of WASD without needing an MMO mouse. For instance, my Swiftcast is on Alt-Q. I'm not saying yours should be, because it is kind of weird, but find a system that makes sense for you. Personally, I like to keep thematically similar actions roughly grouped for ease of memorization, and I always try to place similar abilities across jobs in similar spots. Example, my home gang is on the same key as my hallowed ground. But ultimately, it's up to you. Whether you bind stuff to Alt-D, Shift-X, Control-C, it doesn't matter. Use whatever, wherever, so long as you can reach it fast and comfortably. The fewer Naruto hand signs you make while reaching for your abilities, the faster your inputs will be. Sorry, ninja mains. Oh, and real quick, there is no reason you need to roleplay as a microwave at any level of content. Unbind A and D from turn left and turn right and bind them both to strafe. Your movement will improve immediately. Some people advocate for legacy movement, which makes all your WASD presses true directional, but there are other settings you need to make this actually viable. And having experience experimented with both, I personally think legacy is more of a headache than a help. You're totally free to disagree, and if you're interested in trying it out, there are some great videos out there that compare the two in more depth. Continuing along, we have to put our newly keybound spell somewhere, right? Hot bars. You will see a lot of variation in top player HUDs there. Some people who have memorized all their keybinds will hide their main bars to clean up screen real estate. Some people shove their bars off into a corner. Some enlarge them. Some shrink them. It doesn't really matter. They just need to facilitate your gameplay, not impede it. I am not very good with math or tracking time, so I rely on this setup and I know a lot of other players do too. Maybe I've taken it a bit far, but the basic idea is this. Put a copy of your most important abilities on a separate hotbar without keybinds and make it big. That way, you can glance down and check cooldowns without needing to scan through your smaller, actual bars. It could be just one big job ability that the rest of your rotation is built around, say, Machinist's Drill. Or it could be, in my case, every major healing cooldown. But having a way to reliably track big CDs will massively improve your consistency. If you can get good at mindfully reading these timers, you will learn fights faster because you'll start to make connections like, oh, X ability is coming off cooldown in 30 seconds. That must mean Y mechanic is happening soon. Also, if you want a hotbar to be shared or not shared between jobs, go to this tab and you can customize that to your liking. For the sake of a clean aesthetic, I also disable hotbar numbers and the hotbar cycling button, since I use all 10 anyway. Moving on to a fast one, here's another tip for cooldowns. In a recent patch, Square added a centered option to recast timer positions, enlarging and, well, centering the CD tracker. There is virtually no reason to not use this setting. Okay, I'm going to zoom out from hotbars now and bring us to an umbrella HUD placement tip. Centralize, centralize, centralize. I've had a few funny comments on my other videos about my lunatic minimap placement. Truth is, I find it really useful and it follows a theme for everything else in my UI. It is all within a tightly contained zone of information. I don't need to look at the corner of my screen at any point during an encounter. Every piece of information I could possibly need, from cooldowns to boss health to debuffs, is all within one peripheral field of view, which also happens to be the center of gameplay. The default HUD does not encourage this. It spreads you out all over the place, putting enemy bars at the top, your health and action bars at the bottom, the minimap up here. It's kind of a mess. You don't need to copy my setup, especially since it's personalized and aimed more at healing, but while designing your own HUD, really try to ask yourself, can I get all the information I need for my role without looking away from the action? If you're too tunneled on your bars and miss a boss cast, or you're looking at the minimap when a fast mechanic comes out, that's going to hurt. Again, the HUD is supposed to be your friend, not your enemy. If you're having trouble getting everything right where you want it, it's time to rescale. You can more or less resize any element in the FFXIV HUD, and most of them are pretty self-explanatory. You click an element in the HUD layout, then this gear, and boom! 
options. If the max size is too small for your screen, there's also this option in System Display to upscale for bigger resolutions. Shrink things, grow them, line them up along the grid in the background here, do whatever you need to. But there is one thing you can resize that not many people know about, your tooltips. For whatever reason, this is not as straightforward as resizing, say, your minimap. If you want to make your tooltips bigger or smaller, you have to first attach them from your cursor under Character, UI Settings, Help. After setting position to Fixed, go to your HUD layout, then you can scale the tooltip size like anything else. The Action box refers to, well, actions, that is, spells and abilities, whereas item, well, you get it. You can either leave the tooltips fixed to this new anchor, or you can go back, reattach the tooltip to your cursor, and ta-da, it retains whatever size you set. However, if you cranked it too much and the icons now look like squares trying to censor something, you have another menu to visit. Under System, Graphics, set UI resolution to High. It's pretty self-explanatory and the difference is immense. Please, for the love of Yastola, enable this. Unless your computer truly cannot handle it, this setting makes everything so much nicer. I realize we're straying quite far from the whole clearing content focus of this HUD, so let's get back on track. For our next trick, we will be dividing up Thancred's infinite rocks, or something. I don't know, I've never seen a DC movie. By default, target info looks like this. It's all grouped together in one place and shares one scaling option. This does not spark joy. I recommend splitting these elements up and moving them independently. The target progress bar, aka their cast bar, is the most important thing here, so I crank it to 200% and make sure it's nice and central per the rules we just went over. The health bar matters considerably less, though note, I do recommend playing with target percent health on, and it's not by default. A lot of boss mechanics happen at percent health thresholds, so it's important to have this info on hand. Anyway, the debuffs I usually keep relatively small and on top of the health, just make sure it's big enough to track your dots and or raid buffs. You can and should do the same thing for yourself, splitting up your buffs, debuffs, and others is a great way to clean up your screen. Others mean stuff like free company actions and food duration, information you don't really need in the heat of the moment. I put mine way up here, out of sight until I need to check between wipes or instances. Buffs and debuffs, on the other hand, are very important. If you don't notice a particular debuff on yourself, you could wind up killing people or even torpedoing the whole run. Likewise, it's really good to keep track of buffs to make sure you're getting all your damage inside the raid buff windows. If you don't know what that is, go check out my beginner raid tips guide after this. Next, job gauges. Not all of them were made equal. You should consider whether to use the simplified or full versions. For instance, I prefer the full BLM gauge, but find the curving lily tracker of white mage much less concise than its simple counterpart. As an added bonus, simplified gauges tend to be smaller and more compact, helping them fit into a well-designed HUD easier. Next up, many jobs have ground targeted actions, and they used to be a real pain to actually place. Thankfully, Square added these options a few years ago, and if you're not already using them, you should be. Instead of having to guesstimate what 30 yalms looks like, the game will gate your cursor inside a valid placement range. Further, with this option, you don't need to click at all, but can just repress the keybind and violin. It all makes it so much easier. Tacking on another quick option to this tip, if you play with multiple monitors and you're worried about your mouse going off screen when placing stuff or clicking around, go to System Config, Mouse Settings, and Limit Mouse Operation to Game Window. It helps. All right, now that there's a dome down, you have a new issue. You can't see it because there are 70 million spell particles on your screen like you've stumbled into a fantasy nightclub. No, not this type. The solution? Limited battle effects. This setting hides player spell visuals except for circles you should stand in. It really tones down the chaos on your screen, especially in 8 or 24 man content, never mind hunts or fate trains. You can also filter out your own effects, but I personally leave these on, and I definitely don't recommend show none. You really want to see spells like Soil and Asylum. And if you're coming from other MMOs and like tab targeting, you've probably noticed Square's take on the system is absolutely nightmarish, but they eventually added cone targeting, which kind of helps, but is not the default for some reason. Basically, cone prioritizes mobs closest to you, then cycles out farther, whereas the default ignore depth option will cycle left to right, irrespective of how near or far a potential target is. If you like tab targeting, you should absolutely be on this setting. Again, I can't overemphasize that HUDs are subjective, so tinker around and really crawl through the character and system settings. If you have any other suggestions for new players, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, thank you, bye.